that Australia's current bipartisan commitment to reduce carbon emissions is inadequate. The Climate Change Authority says the 5% minimum target would leave Australia lagging behind comparable countries like the United States. It's advising a tougher approach, but instead of providing a single target, it's outlined two possible options, as Lexi Metrol reports. The federal government wants to abolish the Climate Change Authority, but at the moment the advisory body is still operational, and as required, it's delivered a draft report on Australia's emissions targets. There's bipartisan support to cut emissions from 2000 levels by at least 5% by 2020. But the Climate Change Authority has today declared that target is inadequate and not credible. The authority's chief executive, Anthea Harris, says a tougher target is needed if Australia is to make its contribution to the international goal to limit global warming to 2 degrees Celsius from pre-industrial levels. The costs of moving beyond 5 are relatively small, and moving beyond five would put us more in line with what other countries are doing. The authority hasn't recommended a single target, though. Instead, it's canvassed two possible scenarios. A 15% reduction by 2020, with a trajectory range of 35 to 50% by 2030, or a 25% reduction in emissions by 2020, with a trajectory range of 40 to 50% by 2030. It's found moving from a 5 to a 15% minimum target would mean cutting an extra 305 million tonnes of emissions. Anthea Harris says the cost isn't significant. The authority has um, looked in detail based on modelling conducted by the Treasury and the former Climate Change Department uh, at what the overall cost to the economy might be. Uh, and it estimates that the economy would still continue to grow and what we would see would be a small reduction in the rate of growth in something like gross national income per person of about uh, less than two hundredths of one percent in terms of that reduction in annual growth rates. The authority's recommendations will be available for public comment before its final report early next year. The report comes at a critical time with international climate talks about to ramp up. Next year, Australia will have to declare whether it's revising its emissions reductions targets with a final target pledge due by 2015. But for now, the Environment Minister, Greg Hunt, is making no commitments. We have a commitment to the current targets and we will assess any change in the context of what the world is doing, as we've always said we do in the lead up to the 2015 conference. So this is one input. It's a draft report. I respect and appreciate the... Uh, the contribution. Ahead of the release of the report, the opposition's environment spokesman Mark Butler urged the government to pay heed to its recommendations, despite its plan to dismantle it. The United States is working to a reduction target of 17% by 2020. Uh, the European countries, Germany, the UK and others have very significant targets. So this is a debate we have to have and I'd like to see the independent voices maintained in that debate rather than shut down. The Greens leader Christine Milne says the government must now abandon the 5% minimum target. The Greens have always said it should be a minimum of 25%. But the other issue that the Climate Authority report makes very clear is that we are going to have to get close to net carbon zero by 2050. The question is, do we do it now and work through this so there's no dislocation in the longer term? Or do we sit back now and ignore this and know that it's going to lead to massive dislocation in the decades to come? That's the Greens leader, Christine Moon, in the Metro's report. Today's colour... Uh, well, there you go. Tony Abbott and the Liberal National Party in a minority coalition have set their hearts on the idea that reducing carbon emissions by 5% would be the very worst thing that you could possibly ask them to do. They got themselves into an electoral position where they've probably got uh, some ability to pass that through both houses of parliament because at the moment the Labor Party appears to be collapsing. Just go into water. And as they said, France has adopted targets. Germany's adopted targets. America's adopting targets. 
China's adopting targets all sort of between 15 and 25 percent reduction in the short term with an understanding that by 2050 we have to reduce carbon emission by you know 50 to 90 percent and Tony Abbott he honestly thinks that having convinced the rednecks in the suburbs of Australia and the farmers who don't want to know about it that climate science is absolute crap and the evidence for global warming is to say the least contentious he now thinks he's going to sell that to the rest of the world and the rest of the world has the opinion that whereas Australia used to be a bit of a leader back in the days when you know Paul Keating and and Bob Hawke were running the country well now Australia seems to be um, trying to go backwards on efforts to tackle global warming. These chuffs are sunbaking to kill nits and lice. You thought they were dead, didn't you? No, they're pretty smart. They're smarter than the bloody politicians that are running Australia anyway. See, that one agrees with me. And especially for Laura Leela in Cornwall, see these chuffs? They have black beaks. They're red on the inside of the beak and they're red around the eye. But the outside of the beak is definitely black. Just the way it says in the Field Guide to Australian Birds by Michael Morgan, white winged chuff. Or Corax melanor hamphos, 43 to 47 centimetres woodland, open forest, Mallee mulga timbered watercourse margin cypress. Forages usually on the ground, moving forward in a scattered group, probing and scratching insects, seeking insects and other small ground dwelling prey. Chuff flocks usually build up over several years from the offspring of one pair. Size ranges from 4 to 20 birds. Has rather mournful piping calls. Uh, beginning as high clear musical whistles descending and becoming more mellow, a pause then rising high and clear again for the next long downward slide. Tew, tew, tew. Well, I can tell you they've got a lot more calls than that. Uh, usually given by many of a group together, calls intermingling. In alarm or aggression, harsh rasping sound. Chazark. Locally nomadic, common. Bill strongly down curved, especially near base gives unusual drooping look to the entire bill, eye orange with bright deep pink outer ring, white of wing patch usually hidden in folded wing, it may show if the wing is drooped, tail long with uh, far beyond the tips of the folded wings. Very large conspicuous white wing patches divided by black lines along the leading edges of the flight feathers. Melanor Hamphos is the blue distribution area and I'm up at the northern end of it. So Corcorax Melanor Hamphos rather undignified display of having one's tail feathers pecked. Perhaps the one doing the pecking is a bureaucrat paying homage to a politician. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Climate change, climate science, global warming denial. Ain't it a pity? The humans haven't got the brains of a bird. I figure they've got their mouths open like that because they're trying to pant because they think it's a hot day too. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.